on matters with doom and number. So I, I don't even think it is news or there's anything that is different that we're going to discuss this morning. But then again, we continue creating emphasis and on just trying to understand and most importantly enlightening the common monainchi on whether there's an importance at all of having the Huduma number. So I'll have to my panel saying that whether they see any benefits are coming out of it and whether indeed the project was forced on the people of Kenya because it sounds like it is the, it is the case. You know, uh, on the lines you go there and you find that most of the people have decided to go with their ID numbers only. You know, every other person is saying that there's actually nothing much that is needed. Most of the times they'll tell you ID. And you know, most of these Kenyans have their NSSF and HIF numbers, they have their marriage certificate numbers, they have all these details that would be needed, but they opt to go with their ID number. So a clear indication that maybe details have not been merged because, because then the whole idea was about merging some of these key details of an individual. So if at all I would only go there and present my ID and you know it is welcomed with no questions and all that, then it's a clear indication that maybe this has <coughs> not served the purpose. Before we come to that, let's just look at what was the court order and what it pronounced. And um, from High Court, that is uh, basically a bit of uh, something that was mentioned at this particular time and um, pending the hearing and determination, this is, uh, I'll, I'll just pick it up from there, I'm sure we're going to be able to gather it. And uh, pending the hearing and determination of the consolidated petitions, the respondents shall not, number one, compel any member of the public to participate in the collection of personal information and data in names. Number two, set any restrictions or deadlines as regards the collection of the said personal information and data. And number three, set the collection of personal information and data in names as a condition precedent uh, for the provision of any government or public services or access to any government or public facilities. Focus on point number two. You shall not set any time restrictions or deadlines as regards to the collection of the said personal information and data names. Of course, maybe the government is looking into the six million that they put into it. I don't know whether they're going to add more. Uh, because of this extension that was there. But it's a lot of hula-baloo and a lot of confusion for the common Wanaichi. I would personally say that I've been reporting on this for the longest time possible since we started talking about it. But I barely understand what of the common Wanaichi who's on the ground, who's probably just going out there to queue and register with no single knowledge of why they need this number. <coughs> I think to start with, as Senator Sakaja said, most of the things that are done in this nation are probably good for this nation. Mm -hmm. But the way in which they are done is not good for this nation. Straight to the court order, it says the government shall not set um, a deadline for the registration. Mm -hmm. And they are clever enough, they don't set a deadline. They say that the mass registration we are doing will end on this day, but from then on you can still do it at the chief's the office. Chief's office. So Kenyans are very clever people. Whichever way you word your court order, they will go around it. They will say the one that we have stopped is mass registration. So we are, compil we are complying with the court order. Right. Because from then on you can go to the chief and you can have it done. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you don't achieve much in courts. What we shall achieve this nation is leadership. And I keep saying we are devoid of leadership. Right. Because what should have happened initially is why are we getting a new Huduma number? The bulk of Kenyans have an ID number. Yeah? So in my opinion, it is wise enough to find a way to make sure that every Kenyan who has an ID, for example, uh, has their details captured. Why don't you tie the NHIF to the ID number? Mm -hmm. Why don't you tie the... <coughs> the NSSF to the ID number. It, it should have been the other way. Right. Don't come and create a new number, and then you want us to append all our stuff to this new number. Mm -hmm. There is an ID. Why don't you tie the driving license, for example, to the ID number? NTSA has had a very nice portal. On that portal, I have been able to renew my driver's license at midnight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once I renew at midnight, I have gotten a confirmation and I've taken a screenshot. And if I came across a policeman on the road, I'd tell them I renewed my driver's license at yeah. night. But what is at stake at for the government? There's some six billion. Six billion that we do not know how it was allocated. Six billion that probably was never discussed in parliament. Mm -hmm. Six billion that was never discussed in any forum, but it was allocated to provision of Huduma number. Mm -hmm. So, and usually I say, whatever happens in Kenya, the worse off need to become better off before those who are better off become even better off. But now we have a nation where the worse off continue getting worse off and those who are slightly better off continue becoming even better off. Mm -hmm. I think this Huduma number, even from the 
uh, inception was badly done. I think from the comfort of our telephone, we should have been able, I mean, we are transacting billions of shillings on M-Pesa and we have not had people complaining. So what is this thing that is worth six billion that Kenyans would not have been able to be asked? What's your ID number you input? Or uh, what's your telephone number you input? How many wives do you have? Because I think the government was very interested in knowing that. <laughs> so you just put all of them there. Yeah. Uh, how many husbands do you have? And the Selequins had a problem because if you put so and so, they'll Your discover and so on and so forth. So this Huduma madness right. is something that would have been done differently. Mm. I appreciate the need to be able to have the information of all Kenyans in a portal that is easy to manage for government. Mm. But the way it was done, it was so pedestrian, it was so unwise, it was so disorganized, and even now, it may not end up achieving the objective that they did. Because I remember once I was done, I would have expected to be issued with a Huduma number immediately. Right. I was given some waiting card, which and tells me would. there's some manual process that mm -hmm. will go into keying in. Probably my thing will come out saying I have seven wives and 14 children. I do not know. Mm -hmm. Then we have to go and correct. It's not a bad thing to be given a big family. So I think this thing is good. But the way in which it has been done is horrible. Yeah. Speaking of the way it has been done, you know, just going to the uh, practical bit of it, it was terrible when I was trying to queue to get this, you know. The numerous guys who were there, the Kenyans were, you know, all over these officers. The officers did not have places, you know, specific places to put up their desk and all that. Yeah. I mean, I wish it was done as though, uh, as, as the way, you know, we normally do the elections. You know, there's some level of security provided for these officials and all that. I mean, it was terrible where I was. And I was looking at that and I'm thinking, what was the government thinking? What, why hadn't they put on, you know, some of the crucial things that would be needed in terms of protecting these people and ensuring that there's some level of sanity at this particular point? So, Doc, coming to you, generally speaking, probably this would be a good thing. Maybe just to pinpoint what would be of benefit to the common monarchy so that at least we say, after all, we've not lost it all. To the benefit of common monarchy, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. could be zero. Ouch. Because but you registered. What, what really motivated you to? Well, uh, if you're in Kenya, well, that's, this is an, an, an advice to... Uh, citizen, mm -hmm. most of the time when you hear government agendas, as much as you resist them, uh, you don't uh, kick ag against the, the gods. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, you might end up hurting yourself. And uh, when uh, we are scrutinizing and questioning these things, mm -hmm. uh, we questioned the level of uh, impunity that surrounded this process. Mm -hmm. Where you. did you hear any gazettement or advertisement yeah. of the individuals who were registering people? Mm -hmm. Did you hear any anywhere? And what was the qualification criteria for those who are registering you? A moment uh, they are gazetted, even the IBC gazette their own people, and you know they do recruitment. And this is understand is a public affair. Yeah. Uh, how, who, and how did they qualify these individuals? How did they give them those? Did they get those jobs? Yeah. Uh, those are questions that we were raising. And over and above, when you're talking about service, in Kenya today, you cannot open a bank account without an ID. Yeah. Worst of all, you can't even get married without an ID. I know. In Kenya, mm -hmm. you're bored, you want to move, just move a car. You must register and have a driving license. Mm. You cannot move in Kenya without a driving license. Right. And you cannot sell your own property, your own house, mm -hmm. if you do not have a PIN number, yeah. which is linking you to the taxman. Right. And to get the PIN number, you needed the ID. And to, mm -hmm. oh, you see, these, all these things are intertwined. Yeah. And then the other day, they introduced NEMIS for ch children. Now we are talking about the Uduma number as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, some actually are standardizations that are global. Right. And when they're global, what you need to do as a good leader, a leader is a servant. Mm -hmm. He fills the people. Yeah. Do not fleece them. He serves the people. You do not sacrifice them. You understand them. You walk along with them. You do not abuse them. But the moment you get your own concept and... As a bully, you just come talking down at them. I wonder, Bonamatiangi, because some things, these are the things I'm seeing also in education do docket, mm -hmm. where Oru has had the, the president of picking some arrogant, uh, bully looking people, people who man. talk with no humility, mm -hmm. actually lacks understanding and knowledge. The moment you start talking at people like that, even if the concept was good, they will they resist will not, it. Yeah. Because when you're looking at the actual beneficiaries of this entire process, 
It is other people who will be man maintaining the hardware, mm. people who are managing the software, mm -hmm. and also the companies who applied for those software management and hardware provision. We've had questions with them. Mm. Or to move for Bangor 2017 election and took Kenya at actually the time need of uh, uh, the, the, the needed moment, the hour where we needed it. Uh, they were sleeping in France. Uh, not opening the server to verify the election. Yeah. People had questions with this. Actually, they were taken to court mm -hmm. for uh, misappropriation. There were a lot of uh, corruption allegations. Mm. Do you and conclude, then this, Doc, then, sorry, let me just cut you short. Do you conclude then that we're going to have a half-baked process? Because in the event that Kenyans do not understand the essence of this, and then they eventually decide to give minimum information to the government in the sense that they will just go with the ID and, you know, overlook all these other documents that are needed to be presented. We agree that probably the government has all this information. But then again, if Kenyans, you know, just come with very little or minimal information as from what is expected, does it then mean that the entire process will be just a sham? Or it's just going to be a half half-break process that is not going to meet the target as expected by the government. That's the fear based on the questionnaire, uh, based on the, the uh, even the personnel that they employed, because some will just qualify you and pass those mm -hmm. things without a proper uh, 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 fill, uh, filling of that entire que uh, questionnaire that right. they're giving mm -hmm. you. And uh, uh, there are some things that also they are asking for, which needed people to get time to prepare themselves. Yeah. Uh, some people probably did not have birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Some people had challenges with this and that. And for you to get all this in order, if you are not having, uh, you know, the process of getting a birth certificate is not an it's instant hassle, thing. Yeah. So all those could be a challenge that might mar the entire ex exercise. Mm. But yes, uh, it needed to also come from bottom up. up yeah. If it came from bottom up, owned by the people, it would be very easy. Mm -hmm. And one thing I agree with him also is that there are other methods. Because if you consulted widely, you could have adopted uh, the, t uh, the technology approach mm -hmm. where you just go and key in, and yes, it generates your details, right. and you get what you want as long as you know it is a, uh, I mean, a, a, I mean, well, well structured. Even uh, the way we are doing, we've been paying our taxes online. Sure. But allowing Kenyans to stand in the rain, mm -hmm. uh, to me, it boils down to and abuse. to miss work, mm -hmm. abuse right. of power. Of power yeah. Exactly, you are getting out of your businesses on something that benefits you not. Mm. Because as it stands, you already have documents that benefit you, that can help the government serve you, mm. yet the government does not even think of you. They just talk at you and tell you, go and queue, you know, go and line yourself <laughs> somewhere without proper lo logistics. It's no, terrible. That's the abuse mm. that any leader like me cannot sit back and watch. Right. We will vocalize and tell them, the government, you're abusing your citizen and you have to stop. Mm -hmm.